It's seven o'clock. This is a Sky News special programme on the war in Ukraine. Our top story. At a turning point, the verdict of the Ukrainian president as Russian forces edge closer to Kiev. <laughs> Digging in, Ukrainian troops try to hold their lines on the outskirts of the capital. As Kiev prepares, some major cities, including Dnipro, come under attack for the first time as Russia broadens its assaults. Today they're digging and digging, filling sandbag after sandbag to try to protect these beaches. We report from the southern city of Odessa, where residents are preparing for a Russian assault. The UN Security Council debates disputed Russian claims that Ukraine is developing chemical weapons, but the US president has a warning of his own for Vladimir Putin. I'm not going to speak about the intelligence, but, but uh, Russia would pay a severe price if they use chemical weapons. <laughs> Mr. Putin meets his closest ally as the parent company of Facebook and Instagram becomes the latest victim of the Russian clampdown on foreign media. And we report from Poland as the UN says more than two and a half million refugees have now fled the fighting in Ukraine. A very good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jonathan Samuels and this is a special programme on the war in Ukraine. The country's president, Vladimir Zelensky, said today that the conflict has now reached a strategic turning point as more major cities across the country become caught up in the Russia offensive. The main focus, however, remains the capital, Kiev, with Russian forces moving three miles closer in the past 24 hours, according to a senior US defence official. Well, let's take a look now at the latest developments. There's been renewed fighting on the outskirts of the capital and in the eastern city of Kharkiv, where where a psychiatric hospital was hit by a Russian airstrike. There's no word on casualties, but 330 people were at the hospital. Dnipro is the next likely target as Russia's southern offensive moves north. Two other strikes near airports in the western cities of Lutsk and ivano frankivsk were also reported. Sky's Katerina Ritozzi has the latest on today's developments. Russia hadn't prepared for this. With guns and anti-tank missiles, Ukrainian forces repel an assault outside of the capital, Kiev. This firefight was filmed yesterday. This is payback for the bombing of Maripol, this soldier says. According to British intelligence, unexpected Ukrainian ground resistance is limiting the progress of Russia's forces. The foreign fighters amongst them seen by Russia as Western provocation. Regarding the gathering mercenaries from around the world for Ukraine, we see them. The Western sponsors of the Ukrainian regime do not keep it secret. They do it openly, disregarding international law. But how long can this resistance hold out? Ukraine's president today made a heartfelt appeal to the war-weary. I know many people are feeling tired now. I understand it. I understand it's all about emotions and it's life when we mobilise our efforts and when we can see that we can win. We expect the enemy to fall quicker, but the truth is, in this war, the fight, we need more time. We need more patience. We need to be wise. We need to do our job the best we can to gain the victory. But UK intelligence says Russia is planning a fresh wave of assaults. This video was released by the Russian army. They purport it shows their troops on the move on the outskirts of Kiev. US defence officials say some Russian contingents are now just nine miles away. Other major cities are also under attack. Captured on CCTV this morning, Sky News has verified this video from just before 6am. There's no obvious military target here. This was a shoe factory. 
Now it's embers and ash as air raid sirens blare. Civilians here scramble for safety underground. More than two million people have now fled Ukraine. Those still here in besieged cities like the northern Kharkiv find shelter wherever they can. In the southern port city of Mariupol, there is yet another attempt at establishing a humanitarian corridor to help hundreds of thousands of people safely escape a place where there's no food and no fuel. The Russian army continues to do air strikes, air bombing, artillery shelling, and uh, their um, troops are behind the city. And in some districts of the city, we have war, um, street battles. So as you understand, the humanitarian situation decreased hour by hour, second by second. Ukrainian officials today appealed yet again for international military might to maintain a no-fly zone. The US president, though, clear and firm, they wouldn't support one. We'll defend every single inch of NATO territory with the full might of the united and galvanized NATO. We will not fight a war against Russia in Ukraine. Direct confrontation between NATO and Russia is World War III, something we must strive to prevent. But as families cower in basements, there's the spectre of further atrocities. Russia says the U.S. has been making biological weapons in Ukrainian labs. Claims the U.S. and U.K. say are a fake story to cloak a possible chemical attack of Russia's own. A fake story with very real victims living in places where aid can't get in and from where they can't get out. Katerina Vototsi, Sky News. <laughs> Well, our security and defence editor, Deborah Haynes, is in Lviv in western Ukraine for us this evening. Uh, Deborah, what more can you tell us then about uh, these reports of a fresh wave of attacks by Russia, uh, Russia really ramping up the pressure? Yes, well, I went to visit the site of one of the attacks in the West. We've had, over the last more than two weeks now of this war, uh, the focus of the Russian um, attack or offensive has been in the south, in the east and in the north, obviously encircling Kyiv, the capital. Um, but overnight last night, well, in the early hours of this morning, actually, about sort of quarter to six this morning, there was airstrikes uh, against two military airfields in the west of the country. So uh, an, an expansion, really, of the targeting. Um, the belief is that it's a sign that Russia is trying to take out the Ukrainian ability to use its air force against Russian targets, which has been something that Russia has failed to do since the start of the invasion. But also some are interpreting this as a signal that, the, uh, that, that nowhere in this country is safe. The West has been more of a safe haven. Um, here in Lviv, it's been a real transit hub for those you know, more than a million and a half refugees many of them coming through this point to get into next door Poland. Um, so a, an expansion there. And then also in terms of the, um, the actual war itself uh, and who's involved in it, there are real concerns from the Ukrainian side tonight that Belarus might be about to get involved. Um, you've had reports over the last few days of um, concern over the posturing of Belarusian uh, soldiers, paratroopers, on the border with Ukraine, Belarus, a close ally, one of the closest allies that Russia has in the region. And um, tonight, a warning that they might be launching some offensive roundabout now. The, the time that was given by the Ukrainians was nine o'clock local time, which is now. Um, they said they accused Russia of launching air or launching attacks from Ukrainian airspace using Russian jets against Belarusian villages on the border and saying that that could be some kind of provocation. Uh, we've yet to see if that would happen. Um, Belarus, be, the Belarusian president has denied that his country would get involved, but his country, frankly, has, is already involved in terms of allowing its soil 
to be used for Russian troops to launch their invasion and also to launch missiles against Ukraine. So it's already been sanctioned because of that. But that potentially, if that were to happen, that would be a serious deepening and widening of this conflict, bringing in a whole other country, albeit one very much under the uh, influence of Russia, into the conflict too.